Hello, this is Maria with Four Season Foraging, a Minneapolis-based business that teaches people to safely and sustainably identify and harvest wild edible plants. And today we're going to talk about plantain, uh, broadleaf plantain specifically. But before I get into all that, uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. It's a great way to support my site for free. All right, so plantain, what is plantain? So it's not related to the banana-like plantain that you find in stores. I get that question a lot. It's very different. Um, Latin name of plantain is Plantago ovata, at least of the broadleaf plantain it is. And there's different Plantago species that grow across North America, but um, Pontago ovata, the broadleaf plantain, is the most common. It can be used interchangeably, so no worries about uh, poisonous lookalikes or anything like that. So plantain is a very common plant. It grows in parks, yards, boulevards. It's a common weed. You'll find it in gardens, landscapes, and has a very broad range. And you'll find it I'm sure growing in your backyard, if you have a backyard. If not, I'm sure you'll find it in your neighborhood. Um, and the part we're gonna talk about today is the leaves. Um, I'll get into the flower buds and seeds a little bit, but the leaves are what's available to eat right now. So that's what I'm gonna focus on. So the plantain leaves look like this. Um, they're oval or egg-shaped. They have a stem that's maybe an inch or a half inch long. It's often purple tinged at the bottom there. Um, the important thing with plantain is to note the parallel veins. It's usually five parallel veins that run through the leaf. Um, and if you flip the leaf over, it's even more obvious. You can really see the bottom of the vein there. Um, and the thing with these veins is they get stringy and tough a lot of time. Like if you pull them apart, there's little strings coming off here at the ends. And that doesn't have a very pleasant texture. Um, so you do want to get plantain as young as possible uh, for that reason. And because the bitterness of it increases as it gets older. So they're definitely best when young. So here's a closer look at the leaves of plantain. And I just wanna point out this growth pattern here it is what's called a basil rosette. So you have all these leaves coming out from a central point in a uh, circular fashion. So it's kind of making a big circle. And basil just means it's close to the ground. So it's called a basil rosette. Um, and I also want to point out that there's a lot of plantain on the lawn here. Once you find one plantain, you're probably going to find a lot of plantains. But this one here is nice to look at. You can see the purplish reddish color on the stem. You can see the parallel veins running down. And if I break this off, yeah, you can see those little strings coming off. Oh, that's not a string, that's a blade of grass. But there's, <laughs> there's a little string coming off. And if we look here, you can see the stringiness of it. So you do want to get the leaves as young as possible. One thing you can do is get the leaf that's in the centermost of the basil rosette that will be the tenderest youngest leaf so if i pick this one let's see what it tastes like it's okay it's pretty bitter as i expected um yeah it's not bad though it's got a bit of the like kind of nutty mushroomy flavor that people talk about with plantain. So um, yeah, it's all right. I need it. 
So if all you can find for the plantain is like older, tougher leaves, um, all is not lost. So you can make plantain chips out of them, which is like a kale chip um, where you coat it in oil and roast it in the oven until it gets crispy. I'm going to try that later because I've never actually tried it myself. I have read about it quite a bit and it sounds really good. I love kale chips, so I imagine that plantain chips are tasty too. Um, another great thing about plantain is that it's medicinal. So the older, more bitter leaves are actually better for medicinal purposes. So if you're looking to put plantain into like a salve or make a tincture or, you know, do something like that, then using the older leaves is actually better. And I'll get a little more into the medicinal qualities of it too. Okay, so what does one do with plantain? Well, like I said, this time of year you want to get the leaves. And again, the earlier you get them, the better. Earlier spring, the better. Um, and what you do with the leaves, you can eat them raw. Uh, you could, you know, put them in a salad, put them on a sandwich, um, do whatever else you would do with a raw green. And it's important at that point that it's very palatable. So. As I was saying, it can get bitter and tough pretty young. So um, yeah, just make sure that it tastes good to you before you try doing that. Um, it can also be cooked, but I don't especially like the cooked flavor of plantain. I'm gonna try the plantain chips because that sounds tasty to me, but you know, you could always try cooking it like spinach or something, um, steaming it or boiling it or throwing it in a soup or something like that. I also wanted to briefly cover the other edible parts of plantain. So come summer, so in a few weeks or so, there's going to be a short stalk that comes up out of these and it's going to be about the size of a pencil, like the thickness and the height of a pencil. Um, and that stalk is gonna have a bunch of flower buds on it. And those flower buds are edible. You can just pick the stalk like that and um, you know, fry it up in butter or olive oil or whatever and eat it. And then when the seeds mature, they're edible as well. Broadleaf plantain is closely related to psyllium, which is a fiber supplement that you'll find in grocery stores a lot. It's the main ingredient in Metamucil. So the Latin name of psyllium is Plantago ovata and that of broadleaf plantain is Plantago major. So they both share a genus, which means Plantago, which means they're really closely related. So um, the point I'm getting to is that the seeds make a great fiber supplement. So uh, when you see that kind of pencil-like spike coming up, it won't be until late summer or fall that the seeds will actually be mature on there, but you can just go around and strip the seeds off of the stem and add those to, you know, like porridge or oatmeal or cereal or just take it like by the spoonful as a supplement. And all that fiber in the husk helps um, keep you regular. It's a bulk forming laxative and it's also soothing. It's got like a mucilaginous quality, kind of like chia seeds. So it can help with the irritated bowels and that kind of thing. The main medicinal aspect of plantain that I want to talk about is in the leaves. So the leaves are a really popular remedy for rashes, wounds, uh, skin irritations, bug bites, that kind of thing. And you can just use the leaf as is if you want. You can chop it up with water and put it directly on the wound. That's what's called a poultice. Um, some people if you're in the field, some people will just like chew up the plant in their mouth and stick it on. You can do that too. Just, you know, keep in mind that your saliva has bacteria in it. So if you're trying to like disinfect a wound, that might not be the best way to do it. Um, but if it's like, you know, something itchy or a bee sting or something like that, it might be fine. Um, so yeah, you can use it as a poultice. You could add it to a salve or a cream or a tincture. Um, I won't get into all of how that's done <laughs> right now. There's plenty of resources out there about it. Uh, but all you need to know is, you know, pick the leaves when they're older and more bitter and then 
they, they go through an infusion process. So you'd be infusing them in oil or alcohol or whatever medium you choose for, you know, usually around four to six weeks. Um, so it's not a difficult process and I recommend that you look into it. So plantain is really well known for drawing the poisons out of wounds. So I actually took a herbal first aid class, just like a really short one. Um, I'm no expert or anything, <laughs> but plantain was talked about in that class and the teacher was saying, um, I mean, she was living in, I believe, rural Appalachia in North Carolina, I think. And there was someone on the farm she was living at who got bit by a brown recluse, which if you don't know, it's a very poisonous spider. It creates these really nasty, like pus ridden giant wounds um, if left untreated. And I don't remember exactly what the situation was, if that person didn't have insurance or if they're just too far away from a hospital or whatever, but they decided to just treat it at the farm and she treated it with plantain and it worked. Like it drew out the poison. There was no ill effects from it. You know, it didn't get pussy or gross looking or anything. It healed well. So um, that kind of, I like that story because it like demonstrates the power of plantain. I'm not saying that you should forego the doctor if you're in an emergency medical situation. I'm just, uh, you know, like illustrating the power of plants. So, and I think that story illustrates it really well. All right, I'm here in my tiny dark kitchen uh, to make some plantain chips with y'all. So over here, which you can't see, I have some plantain leaves that have been washed and now they're drying, tall dried. And I have some olive oil, which I'm gonna to toss with the plantain. And then just some spices, just basic stuff. Uh, salt and pepper. Yeah, I've got some nutritional yeast, but you know, you can pick whatever seasonings you want, whatever floats your boat. It's good by me. Um, I've also got some white wine here because uh, it's been a long day, so don't judge me. So here's the plantain that I just washed with a little bit of mild dish soap, just a tiny bit, and rinsed several times. And the reason I do that is to get dirt off of it, of course. Um, also it helps with avoiding any potential contamination because usually contaminants are ingested because of the contaminated dirt that's on the plant, um, not because the plant has actually absorbed the contamination in its uh, material, in its leaves or flowers or whatever. So uh, you can use whatever you want to wash your stuff, to wash your wild edibles, dish soap, vinegar, special vegetable wash, but I do always recommend that you do it before eating the plant. And I just want to point out that these are older leaves, so you can see the little stringy bit on there. Maybe it'll focus. There we go. Yeah, it's kind of stringy. Um, this one here is a good one. Look at that. So yeah, we'll see if baking it gets rid of the stringiness. Okay, so here's our little bowl of plantain. Uh, I didn't like pick a whole ton of it because this is my first time trying this recipe and if I don't like it, I don't want like massive heaps of plantain chips that I feel obligated to eat. So I just picked uh, this little bowl's worth. Um, and what I'm gonna do is, well, I guess first I'll preheat the oven. So to 350 is what I'm doing it at. That's not the oven, that's the timer. I don't know how to use my oven, obviously. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Got there. Um, let's take some more wine. Okay, so we don't need a lot of oil. Like 
especially for the small amount of plantain. You don't want it like nastily greasy. Well, is there such a thing as nastily greasy? Maybe not, but a light coating will do. <laughs> Um, and then again, you don't need a ton of seasoning because really this isn't very much plant material. So I'm just going to do a little bit here and kind of toss it around with my hands to try to get it evenly coated with the, um, the oil and the seasonings. So some other things I think might be good in this is like garlic powder, um, lemon pepper probably would be really tasty. Uh, maybe Italian seasonings. I don't know. You can try different things. I'm just going for the basic though. All right nicely coated. So now we're just going to lay this on a baking tray and when the oven heats up we'll put it in there for about 10 to 15 minutes. So here's our pretty plantains laid out on the tray. Uh, you can see that they're laid out in a single layer. You don't want them touching too much um, because you want them to get exposed to the air and get nice and crispy. Uh, if they're touching some it's okay and they will shrink up a bit in the oven so you can have them overlapping a little but giving them as much airflow as possible is good okay so our oven is preheated so we're going to take this lovely tray of plantain leaves and pop it in for i'll set the timer for 10 minutes and we'll see what happens I wanted to talk a bit about the vitamin content of plantain leaves because I haven't mentioned that yet. So plantain is actually really healthy for you. It's really similar to spinach actually in the amount of vitamins and minerals it has. So um, it has about the same vitamin A, vitamin C, and calcium as spinach. And then uh, plantain is also really high in vitamin K as well as it contains like you know smaller amounts of some other vitamins and minerals but those are the main ones so uh yeah it's really good for you so it's smelling really good in here right now um there's only two minutes left on the timer but i think i might pull them out it smells kind of mushroomy um i definitely smell that nutritional yeast but i just want to take a look here yeah check those out look how much they shrunk um and yeah, they're definitely crisp. They're not gonna like crisp apart right when they come out of the oven. Um, it, they have to cool a little bit for that, but I can tell that they're dry and they'll be crispy. So that was only eight minutes in the oven. No, turn off. And yeah, we'll just let them cool a little bit and then we'll try them. Okay, so I'm really mad because my stupid camera stopped filming in the middle of filming um so I don't I didn't get a shot of me pulling it out of the oven and trying it for the first time <sighs> which is so sad but you'll just have to trust me that they're good like are crunchy they taste quite a lot like kale, kale chips you don't get any of that strainness or toughness because they're just like crispy could maybe use a little bit more salt. Um, you get a little bit of bitterness, um, kind of like you do with kale chips, but I don't think it's bad. Yeah, I think maybe some like lemon pepper or citric acid or you wouldn't want to put lemon juice on there because it's going to make it hard to get crisp in the oven, but some kind of a acidic powder I think would be really good to balance out the bitterness. Um, and yeah, it's super tasty. So we only ended up actually cooking it for eight minutes in the oven, which is a little less than what I set the timer for at 10 minutes, but it was just like smelling really good and looked really good. Um, and 
yeah, hopefully you can see how crispy that is. Let's crack it. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah, it's super good. Okay, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications. And if you really liked it, you can go to my Patreon, there's a link down below, and uh, support me with a monthly pledge. Um, it starts at a dollar a month, and it's really simple, you get some cool benefits in return, and it would make me very, very happy. So <laughs> if you want to do that, that'd be great. If not, no worries either. Um, so anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great day and have fun foraging. <laughs>